All right, everybody, welcome back to another year of Striper Migration Reports from On The Water. My name is Matt Hefner. I'm the assistant editor at On The Water magazine and uh, excited to talk stripers with you guys and with some of the anglers, uh, tackle shops, and captains across our coast. Over the course of the next 14 weeks, we're going to cover the spring migration all the way from Chesapeake Bay up to Maine, and uh, we'll kind of bounce around the coast throughout just to get an idea of what's going on in different portions of the coast during different portions of the migration. So it was a very long winter. I think uh, this winter we had some more snow than uh, than last year. It was definitely a pretty mild winter in general, but uh, definitely some more snow, which historically has been pretty good for striped bass uh, spawning conditions. You know, they need some of that runoff. Um, snow melt in the spring is very good. Water temperatures have to be conducive to them spawning. Um, so. Some good news on that front, although we will not know how the uh, 2024 spring spawn went until those young of year surveys come out sometime in the fall. So a quick recap of the off season, um, striped bass fishing regulations stayed the same as they were last year. Um, and that's for all modes of striper fishing, meaning it doesn't matter if you're a private boat, a shore angler, or on board a party boat or charter, all striped bass anglers have to adhere to that 28 to 31 inch slot whether or not you like it. On top of that, if you're an angler from Maryland and you fish the Chesapeake Bay, the Maryland DNR has officially closed the trophy striped bass season from April 1st to May 15th in order to let those bass spawn. So it is a very long closure, but in the long run, it'll do a lot of good taking some of the pressure off of those spawning fish as they make their way out of the tributaries and out of the bay. Just a quick recap of last spring. Uh, the early spring in New Jersey started off hot and heavy. There was a lot of big fish being caught in the rivers, um, a lot of them on swim shads, a lot of them on blood worms, and a few on plugs here and there, um, things like minnow plugs, um, so your standard diwasp minnows, mag darters, um, some gliders here and there. Um, and it's really mostly, it seems, due to the concentration of bunker that moved early into places like Raritan Bay um, and even the west end of Long Island, Jamaica Bay. So those bunker were staged up there for weeks at a time. And that bite lasted throughout most of the month of April for anglers in Northern New Jersey and Western Long Island. So far this year in New Jersey, the fishing has been good, although most would say it didn't start off as hot and heavy as it did last year. Meanwhile, up on the Western end of Long Island, surf casters have been doing pretty well on minnow plugs, things like the Joe Bag Swarter, the Daiwa SP minnow, Shimano Colt Sniper Jerk Baits. And most of those fish tend to be holdovers as they're kind of, you know, just barely moving out of the East River, where they spent a majority of the winter months. So this year, we've got a bit of a different format. Um, instead of me trying to take you guys through the entire Striper Coast and the migration, what's happening elsewhere, we're going to have uh, brief migration rundowns from anglers, tackle shops, and captains across the Striper Coast to kind of give you an idea of what's going on at certain stages of the migration in different portions of the coast. So since Stripers are currently running the rivers and spawning in Chesapeake Bay tributaries, let's start there. All right, everybody. So uh, we have our first guest of the week here. This is uh, Alex Perez. He's an on-the-water columnist, um, regular contributor to our weekly fishing reports on behalf of Angler Sports Center for the Chesapeake Bay and Maryland area. Um, he's the fishing manager at Angler Sports Center as well. Um, welcome, Alex Perez. Alex, how are you doing? Good, good, man. How are you guys doing? I'm all right. Can't complain. So, um, I mean, I, you guys are lucky down in the Chesapeake. You've gotten to, you know, fish for striped bass all winter long. So I figured that was a good place to start. I, I'm kind of curious, how do you approach striped bass fishing during the early spring? And can you kind of describe how the bite's been so far for you this year up until now? So, so far, I mean, we actually had one of our best bites in probably 10, 12 years for this winter bite. Uh, now that we have mild winters, uh, most of our bait being bunker actually stays here in the Chesapeake Bay. Mm -hmm. So previous years when it used to get cold, all the bait will flow out of the bay. Obviously, the striped bass will kind of hang out down towards Cape Charles, right at the mouth of the Chesapeake. And this year, we were so fortunate to have lots of bait. And all those big fish obviously came all the way up here to what we call our middle bay area, anywhere from, you know, Chesapeake Beach all the way up to the southern portion of Annapolis. And it was an amazing bite. When we're talking about this, we're talking about, you know, 32, even probably close to the upper 40, even 50 pounds striped bass that were hanging out here. For most of December, January, it was red hot. And then it started to wind down a little bit towards where we are now. And once again, with the water temperatures being a little bit warmer than usual, uh, we believe those fish are kind of getting uh, going up to the rivers and spawning a little bit earlier than they used to now. 
Yeah, I was curious about how, you know, they, they say, you know, heavy snowfall and cold temperatures are ideal spawning conditions for striped bass. But, you know, if you have these mild winters, I mean, I think this year I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but we got a lot more snow, at least up in the northeast here. I'm not so sure about you guys, but you think that that would be conducive to, you know, good spawning um, for striped bass in, in those tributaries. And you guys are right on or right near the uh, Magothi River, right? So, I mean, there's got to be some bass that have made their way upstream by now. So we actually, and myself and some of my friends that guide around here, like you were saying, those fish were up in those rivers way earlier. Uh, we're talking about pretty much middle of February. Those fish are, were making their way up. And like you were saying, without for us, unfortunately, we didn't have that much snowfall. Mm. Uh, I think this is one of the years that we had the least amount of snow here, which um, I wouldn't say is necessarily going to be you know, great for the spawn just because those, you know, temperatures are kind of like in a weird fluctuation kind of point where sure. they keep going up and down, up and down. And then, of course, the one thing that's kind of being a little messy around here in the Chesapeake is the rain. Uh, we don't have like just a little amount of rain that falls throughout, you know, the year now. We actually have some cases where I'm sure you guys had it this past weekend as we did here. It just floods. Yeah. So, you know, we have either no rain or we get these massive storms that just flush everything out the rivers. Yeah. So that's kind of been the case for us here in the past few months, even for the past two or three years, we're following this pattern of mild weathers, no snow and heavy rains once we get to the spring. Gotcha. And so the mild weather, I mean, as, as, as detrimental as it might be for striper spawning conditions, I mean, it, it's got to be great getting out there and, you know, 50, 45 degree temperatures to, you know, jig for stripers and stuff. And I know you spend a lot of time in your kayak. So how have you been personally targeting stripers um, throughout the month of March and, you know, even February and January? So like you were saying with the mild temperatures and whatnot, it's great for you, uh, for the guys like myself, kayaking and whatnot, because you get a lot of those fish in the flats. So here in the Chesapeake, we have a lot of those nice long points that have a flat, and then you have channel edges that run right next to them. Right next to so the big So when you get those flat. mild, yeah. yeah, you get those mild weather days where you have two or three days in the 60, you know, upper 50, 60 degree uh, weather, uh, you get bass all up in there. So, you know, we've been throwing a lot of those shallow diamond plugs, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of those stick baits, uh, and actually we've been throwing a lot of big plastics, but... This year, once again, we had a lot of bait, and most of the bait was actually a little bit smaller. So instead of throwing those seven, eight-inch baits, we were focusing a lot more on the five and six-inch uh, paddle tails and straight tails on some lighter jigs in the flats. And of course, once you make your way to some of these deeper ledges, we're using those heavier jigs anywhere from one to two ounces. Gotcha. Yeah, I remember you mentioning you guys use a, a you know, um, pretty heavy duty jig heads. And like at times, if you're jigging those deep channel edges, it's like, you know, seven inch Z-man soft plastics you're using. Mm -hmm. And of course you got like the NLBNs that are yep. being big with a smaller profile on the five inch. And it's been awesome. I mean, uh, it's it's been one of those great bites. I mean, we had guys going out there that have never caught a big bass and they were getting on days where they were catching 10, 15 plus fish over 40 inches. Yeah. And you know, those fish are pretty heavy, so oh, absolutely. it was pretty great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they hadn't caught a big bass then, you know, before then, they're solidified as striper fishermen now, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. For sure. Well, so, hey, I, I mean, we, we touched on it a little bit, um, but there is a closure for uh, the spring trophy season of striped bass in Chesapeake Bay. Um, so that, that I think that happens this, by the end, of, by the time this comes out, it'll be a day away. So, um, you know, March yep. 1st or... If, Rather, April 1st, the season will close, and that lasts about a month and a half till May 15th. So give us an idea of what striper fishing will look like after the striper season reopens for you guys in the bay. Um, I would imagine a lot of those fish will have already moved out of the rivers. So, you know, what do you expect that bite to look like? So typically what our bite is going to be like, uh, and it's been one of the same, one, like, once again, the same pattern for the past like couple of years now. As soon as we open up in May, uh, all we have is pretty much schooly striped bass. And most of these fish here in the Chesapeake, uh, compared to what you guys call a schoolie up north, they're a little bit smaller. You know, we're talking about like 12, 13 inches up to your 22, 23 inch mark. Mm. And what they do actually is they actually uh, kind of, they schooled up 
in some of these flats that we talked about or some of these areas in the upper bay, more of that brackish water uh, area, which is north of Annapolis. And you have these massive schools of fish that sit there for pretty much most of the summer. And uh, guys like to get on top of them. And most of the guys, you know, they're in the summer, they're using live bait. But of course, the jigging is still pretty good because you're downsizing and using super, super light tackle for them. Right. And most of these areas where we're fishing for them, it's anywhere from, you know, 30 to 20 foot of water, even shallower at times. So you can get away with using super light gear and light weights and all that. Yeah. And and so uh, do, do a lot of people, I know you guys are a bit of a ways from the ocean front, but do a lot of people kind of target stripers out in the surf when those fish are kind of hooking out of the bay and up the coast? So some guys do. And this is one of those things where unfortunately over the past few years, uh, it kind of slowed down for those surf guys. You know, not a lot of guys going out there because – Obviously, the bite wasn't as great down in Assateague, Ocean City. It used to be in the early 2000s, so an amazing bite. You know, you will, you will go out there and get plenty of those, you know, 20-pound fish all the way up to those massive 40-pound fish. Yeah. And it kind of died off a little bit. Now, in the past two years, I've seen more anglers on the coast actually going out and trying. And the funny thing is, once you get past the Delaware Bay, uh, not a lot of people plug down here. I don't know why I'm, it yeah. works, but everybody's chunking out bait here. Uh, and there's some of these new guys that, you know, a lot of our guys here in Maryland are going up to Jersey, seeing how the fishery is, learning those ways of plugging, and they're applying it a lot more now. And to answer your question, yes, there's more guys doing it. More guys are finding out that there is fish moving throughout the coast now. Right. Uh, it's just a smaller window. Uh, it's one of those things where you might get some fish in early, I will say probably early, late December. And then once again, right now, uh, people buy catch them actually because they're out fishing for black drum in that early season bite in Chincoteague and uh, Assateague and, and the Maryland side of the island. Yeah. And they're catching big striped bass. So they're getting more into it. And yes, there's more of those fish coming, going up the coast. Uh, and people are finding that out and it's becoming a thing now. Yeah, well, so you briefly spoke about, you know, the concentration of bunker inside the bay during the winter months. And and it makes sense that right as those bass come out of those spawning rivers, that they're going to be looking for easy meals. And with the concentration of bunker we've seen in places like Raritan Bay and Jamaica Bay and even certain parts of eastern Long Island, um, and a couple of years ago, Plymouth, Massachusetts, just loaded. Those bass, I, I would imagine, are like staging around those schools of bunker mm -hmm. and just you know, waiting to pick them off when the tide is right. So, um, I mean, uh, not that that's entirely responsible for why the surf bite has dwindled over the past few years there, but I think the concentration of bunker in different parts of the coast um, is is what's keeping striped bass and big striped bass, particularly in some of those areas for longer periods of time, rather than hanging around the Chesapeake. Of course. Yeah. I mean, like you just mentioned up in Jersey, obviously, over the past few years has become like, uh, I would like to say, one of the big uh, spots for some of these uh, bass who hang out. And yep. once again, uh, you you said it yourself, uh, find a bait, find a fish, right? So yep. it's one of those things for us. We're fortunate that we have some of that bait hanging around here. And hopefully it stays that way uh, with some of these mild winters. But it's kind of like a, a double-edged sword, you know, like it's good, but it's also not necessarily the best for the spawn. Mm -hmm. uh, but we surely have seen more and more of those big fish come in. That's great, man. Well, hey, I, I really appreciate you jumping on and, and you know, giving us the rundown on what the, the spawning season kind of looks like and what to expect afterwards. Um, we'll definitely be checking back in with uh, the Chesapeake area in Maryland um, a little later on in the migration. But thanks again for jumping on, Alex. Uh, look forward to reading your reports every week. And uh, yeah, best of luck the rest of this spring once those fish start to move out and the fishery reopens. No problem, man. Thank you for having me. Yep. Thanks, Alex. All right, guys. So welcome, uh, Captain Brett Taylor. He's one of our uh, On the Water contributors and columnists. He actually has a feature out right now in the April issue of On the Water magazine on shallow water fluke. Uh, Brett, how's it going, man? It's great, man. Getting ready for the season. Yeah, that's. I, uh, was, I was just talking to you about that. So what kind of boats do you run for stripers? So I have, uh, I have a 23-foot Parker. Um, that's more of my, we'll say my ocean boat. And then I have a 20-foot mako pro skiff and that's kind of like my skinny water Beautiful. backwater uh stuff so i actually use that boat 
for, I don't know, half the season, you know, okay. um, playing in the backwaters in the Bay. Um, and then once, you know, anything out front, obviously I'll, I'll use the Parker sea bass and tog and stuff, but, um, you know, primarily it's, it's that skiff and for, for bass, um, until, you know, May, whatever, when we start getting the, uh, some of the bigger bass up, up sure. near my, yep. Yeah. I know you do a lot of the bottom fishing, but I would imagine, yeah, the first month or so of the season is just nothing but stripers for you. So going off of that, you know, backwater stripes and striper season opened on March 1st in New Jersey. So can you kind of briefly run us through the month of March and describe the changes in fish activity you saw as the month progressed? I know you haven't been out too much, but you know, there's gotta be just an, just give us an idea of kind of what's changed. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, so the beginning of the month, it's usually once that opens, it's all bloodworm. I mean, okay. that's what, um, it's like a bloodworm bite and you're getting more residential fish. The, um, we had, we haven't had a real cold winter. So the, there is a lot of bass activity, mm -hmm. um, south in the, the south there, like as the season goes, um, into let's say mid to now we're to, towards the end of March. Now you're starting to get extreme South Jersey. Um, you, you can get them on bunkered chunks or, you know, clam, but for mm -hmm. the most of March, it's like a blood, it's a worm bite. And that's why a lot of the stores, a lot of the tackle shops I call on, uh, for on the water are, you know, jumbo. Use those jumbo blood worms. Sure. Um, they work the best. The right now, the latest stuff is uh, Fortescue area is getting some fish up to like 37 inches. Okay. Right. And are those, do you think they're mostly fresh migratory fish? They might be some migratory coming in because, you know, that migration is starting. Um, we haven't got it. You know, it's not up. I'm in the, we'll say the Ocean County area. Okay. We're not, it's all residential for us. But the extreme Cape May, because you start, ha you'll start having some of those fish pushing out of the Delaware. I mean, still early yet, right. but you will, as the month goes and into April and May, then you'll start getting more and more of those migratory fish. Gotcha. Okay. And so based on years past, you know, seeing those migratory fish come in, when, when do you expect that the bite will shift from like predominantly those winter holdovers to just exclusively migratory fish? Probably you're, you're looking so extreme South Jersey, you're probably looking april late april okay when you get out to our area as they come around the coast you're looking early may mm. you know, for uh, and i would say uh burlington ocean county atlantic county you know you, you start getting some of those bigger fish pushing up um and that's that's primarily what it is but you know right now into april you're you have a lot of residentials and you can you know if you fish cape may area wildwood you'll probably have more shots at those migratory fish gotcha okay and so what are some of the techniques you use, you know, early on when it's mostly resident holdovers versus when those fresh fish start to push in into the bays and the inlets and stuff like that? I use like, actually like in March, I'll fish a lot of backwater around bridges and stuff. So I'll do, I do like weighted floating, floating uh, bobber with, um, you know, blood worms. Oh, nice. um, and then also it's all plastics. Yep. A lot of times those bridges, if you can get as that water, if we get it like a week of warm, warmer water, uh, you'll have a lot more activity in any bridge in New Jersey, really. Um, yeah. you know, Tom Schrimmer, there's the bridge is Route 37 all the way down. There's there's bass, but then you can get into like your finesse, real you know the the soft plastics or even small um, like really small plugs. But the big thing in for March is slow, really wow. slow. You know because those fish are a little bit you know a little bit slower without water temperatures. Like I said, we've been, we had a great week where it was like 60, 65. Now we're back in 45s every, every day. So we can get 55, 60, you'll start having even more activity. Right. I'd imagine those, yeah, the shallow mud flats and sod banks yeah. start to warm up under the sun a little bit. And you start to see some activity there rather than just those deep channels by the bridges and whatnot. Yeah. That's what, so like April and into even May, um, those fish will, you know, then I'll start hitting them with poppers you know, yeah. three, four inch poppers in the back along the side banks. Um, any, any of those shallow, shallow water mud flats are, are good with that. Uh, the bass will be way more active. Gotcha. Um, you know, cause that water temperature is up, you know, maybe 60 degrees depending on where you are, uh, you know, closer to the inlets, it's cold. So you're not right. going to get that activity. So the further you are, the West part of the Wick bays usually are, are pretty good. Gotcha. Okay. And so you mentioned uh, real quick the uh, that you put blood worms beneath the bobber. That's interesting because I've never really heard of anyone doing that. So like what kind of, what areas are you looking for when you're targeting that in that way? I'll do like, so it's like a weighted bobber. So this way you can, you know, I think it's Billy Bob is the company. Um, you can cast them very far. 
Right. Uh, but you'll do, I'll do three, four foot, you know, leader on that. And um, casting, you know, near the bridges or any channels, your sod, sod bank channels, and just letting it. And, and the cool thing is a lot of times I'll fish in the evening for that. Yeah. And so you can actually watch, you know, you can see that, that bobber go down. That's and so fun. it's kind of like a bit, yeah. And it's, it's, you know, you're not catching, you're not really keeper fish, but it's just, first of all, you're bending a rod and you're catching, you know, shorts and stuff. So it's just fun to get out. It's usually the first, you know, some of the first fishing times of the year. Yeah. That's what, um, that's generally the setup I use. And, and I'll put, you know, you can use sandworms too. So you, you can right. put two or three, usually I put two or three sandworms on. If you get the jumbos, you can put, you know, one jumbo, um, or even two jumbos on, but you know, blood worms are, it's costly. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Very costly. And I think most of them come up from Maine too. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's going to add to the cost, just the transport yep. alone and all that. So, but that's yep. really fun. So you kind of snake them onto the hook or you're not, you're not nodding them on there really like, uh, like you would for, if you're fishing from shore. No, no. And I, I kind of snake them on a little bit. Uh, I'll go like once or twice through it just to hold it. Um, but I kind of like it when it's like a ball. So if you put a couple on, then yeah. it's like a, and, and with that dangling, you know, with that, yeah. that dangling of it, it's, um, and it's amazing. Like when the bass are there, they don't, they don't miss it. Like it's easy yeah. protein. It's something easy for them to digest. They're not really hitting fish yet. Cause there's not a lot of fish in there. Right. And plus it's cold with their metabolism. So the, they will not turn a sandworm or bloodworm down if they're there yeah i mean like you said even though it's small fish it's just there's something about like you know you get that kid arising in you when you see a bobber go down i i, I spent a little time last year like very early in june pitching uh mackerels along the rocks of the north shore of massachusetts and it's a very similar thing you know you're pitching them tight to shore like you know i imagine you go tight to the sod banks down there and just watching that bobber go down and you know even though you're catching mostly schoolies and slots and stuff like that it's a ton of fun so yeah, it's cool. And, and you're working current. So what you do is basically you cast out and you watch it go down and then you'll, you know, reel it in once it gets too far behind the boat or yeah. if you're fishing from shore and then you cast back up, same thing. And you work different areas. Right. So when, I, I guess the better yeah. idea, the better question would be, what techniques do you use to target stripers once the, the bite kind of shifts out front come, you know, mid-April and stuff when you do see those migratory fish versus what you're doing in the backwaters? So if you're, if you're fishing from the surf, it's either going to be salted, you know, your clam or your, your bunker chunks. Gotcha. Um, if you're on a boat, then, you know, if you can find bunker schools, you know, once those bunker schools are in the area, then, then you're going to find those bigger, you know, those migratory fish on those bunker. Mm -hmm. um, that's generally what the ocean, and it's really that ocean temperature, 50, 55 degrees. You know, once you, you start seeing that, um, and once you start, you know, for us, it's like, once we start hearing that there's bunker schools in the area, then there's those fish are usually not far they're either there or they're not far behind yep and do you find that the the first like wave of migratory stripers following like hot on the tails of those bunker are they generally slot range or are they mostly like above that because i know a lot of the breeders kind of start to come out of the tri the chesapeake yeah. tribs and delaware bay pretty early yeah you get you get waves of them um it's it can be those bigger you know 40 50 pound fish that's awesome you gotta use it you know you gotta snag and snag and bring it in and re you know with a circle hook um but that's that's what you generally get i mean we had a fantastic run in the fall um spring's always like you know it's hit or miss with the weather so yep. that's it's our big that that's the big factor is it's the weather in the, in the spring awesome and so what do you plan to do over the next few weeks as you kind of get, you, you know, the ball rolling on the striper season? I know you said you were just, you've only been out once or twice now, but you're getting the boats in the water. So what do you, what do you plan on doing for the next two weeks? I think you said because you have off from school, you actually have a whole week. So I would imagine you're going to be hitting it hard. Yeah, I'm going to do, uh, I have the skiff, like my, the Parker's just getting routine maintenance for the engine. So that's, it's all ready to go. Just that's getting serviced. Um, but the skiff's ready to rock. Um, so next week I have, I have the whole week off. So I think I'm going to probably hit some of the sods and some of my choice bridges at, you know, evening. And just to see, I mean, obviously I'm going to look if I can try to find it where I have an outgoing tide is better. Sure. Um, so that's the the factor. It's, you know, this time of year, you got to fish that outgoing where that you get that warmer water. Um, the incoming is not as good. Right. Well, the outgoings flushing out all the, whatever bait was way up in the back and then the estuaries yeah. and stuff like that. And you, with the incoming, you get no bait and a ton of cold water. So it's like, <laughs> Shuts them down right away. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Yep. Cool. Well, I think that's all the questions I had for you, Brett. I really appreciate your time and giving us a little bit of an update on, you know, the South Jersey striper bite and uh, best of luck to you this spring. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. Yeah, thanks, Brett. Take care. All right. Awesome. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for this week. 
Thanks again to our guests, Alex Perez from Angler Sports Center down in Annapolis, Maryland, and Captain Brett Taylor from Real Reaction Sport Fishing in Waretown, New Jersey. This is just the first of our 14 week video series. So we got 13 more weeks of following the stripers up the coast, getting input from tackle shops, charter captains, and local anglers in your area to fill us in on what's happening with the migration. In the meantime, check out On The Water Striper Cup. It's a 20 week catch and release based striped bass fishing tournament, and you can win weekly prizes from Yeti, Penn, Bubba, and Costa sunglasses by submitting photos of your catch each week on stripercup.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll check in again next week.